This is Ibo Area TV. Hello. Chimamanda ngozi ya dishe win stent pen printer prize. Chimamanda ngozi ya dishe win stent pen printer prize. Nigerian author Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie has been awarded the Pen Pinter Prize, a prize in honor of late Nobel laureate Harold Pinter. The prize is awarded to a writer from Britain, the Republic of Ireland, and or the Commonwealth who casts an unflinching, unswerving gaze upon the war and shows a fierce intellectual determination to define the real truth of our lives and our societies. The judges of the prize described Adishie's understanding of gender, race, and global inequality as sophisticated beyond measure. In this age of the privatized, marketized self, Chimamanda Ngozi Adishie is the exception who defies the rule, they said. Adishie, speaking on the prize, said, I admired Harold Pinter's talent, his courage, his lucid dedication to telling his truth, and I am honored to be given an award in his name. She was to be presented with a prize on October 9. She will also on that date announce her co-winner, the winner of the International Writer of Courage, a prize given to a writer who is active in defense of freedom of expression, often at great risk to their own safety and liberty. The award is given by Blavatnik Family Foundation, Ruth Mustard, and the Thompson Family Charitable Trust. It is of course named after the late Harold Pinter, the master playwright, 1930-2008, who was vice president of English Pen and a tireless crusader for human rights, in particular for an end to torture. Legendary Nigerian musician Raskimono is dead. Legendary Nigerian musician Raskimono is dead. Reports reaching us claims that that legendary Nigerian musician, born Augustine Aumbuya Okeleke, better known as Raskimono, is dead. According to reports, Raskimono passed away in the early hours of Sunday, June 10th, in Lagos. Raskimono was reportedly supposed to travel to the United States on Saturday, June 9th, before he complained of feeling down. He was rushed to a hospital in Ikeja where he was later referred to a lagoon hospital on the island where he died. The news of his death was announced by the Commissioner for Tourism, Arts and Culture in Lagos State, Steve Ayorinde, on social media. Morning the reggae artist, president of the Performing Musicians Association of Nigeria, P-Man, P-M-A-N, Mr. Pretty Okafor, described his death as a big loss to the music industry. According to a family source, it was revealed that the reggae musician was rushed to a hospital in Ikoyi after he slumped on Saturday, June 9, 2018. He posted recently on social media as he clocked 60. Raski Mono from Onisho Lona in Delta State is a Nigerian reggae artist whose debut album Under Pressure, led by the single Rumba Style, was a big hit in the Nigerian music scene in 1989. He started out his career firstly as a student of Buenoba Secondary School Abo and later as a member of the legendary Jastic Reggae Aita alongside Magic Fashion, Amos McRoy, Jeg and Black Rice Osagie. His music was greatly influenced by the poverty, inequality and hardship he witnessed in his early life. May his soul rest in peace. Rain God visits Emo again with anger. Rain God visits Emo again with anger. Not too long ago, a devastating torrential downpour swept across Emo State, destroying public and private buildings in the state. Even Ukorosha's billboards were not spared by the rainstorm. Rampaging flood took over all the streets in Oweri municipality. Vehicles that unfortunately ran into gullies dug by contractors, supposedly to widen the roads, were either swept off or drowned.
People's homes were flooded and property worth millions of naira destroyed. The affected citizens wept like wet babies and prayed fervently that such should not be their lot again. The rain god came visiting again in the ferocious anger. Friday, June 8, 2008, Albert in the night. Earlier in the week, what looked like a harbinger's warning shot destroyed a bridge constructed by Russia's Okorocha administration in the Children's Recreation Center near Concord Hotel, Wherry. No life was lost, but nobody believed that it was a solid signal of an impending colossal disaster. June 8 was a bright, sunny, and hot day. The sun set lovingly, and night crawlers were preparing to set out, but the weather suddenly changed. There was pitch darkness at about 8 p.m. The Enugu Electricity Distribution Company that barely remembered to supply power to residents of Area M, World Bank Estate, withdrew their service unceremoniously at about 8.25 p.m. when it started drizzling. The gentle shower soon metamorphosed into a bristling rainfall of at about 9.15 p.m. This was subsequently accompanied by a ferocious wind. Most families who had gone to bed with the hope of having a cool, sound sleep became jolted as the wind appeared very determined to pull off roofs. Here is the ruins of Uwere City School. Here, the, the blown off roofs fall on everything along Njiribako Street, Uwere. Already, massive criticism has continued to trail these destructions experienced in the state. The former Deputy Speaker, House of Representatives, Chief Emeka Ihedioha, and the immediate past Governor of Imo State, Chief Ikedio Hakim, were in agreement that, apart from these badly constructed buildings and roads, so many other things have similarly collapsed in the state. For Ihedioha, these reported damages remain a solid pointer that things are intrinsically wrong with the so-called signature projects the Governor prided himself with. It was his considered opinion that if there was professionalism and respect for engineering procedures, his so-called project would not have been collapsing like a pack of cards. Reacting or so, Chief Hakim said, no fewer than 70% of the projects built by Korosha has collapsed. They range from precast school buildings, Prince and Princess Hotel, tunnels and collapse of Twin Tower of the Twin Rivers, Otamiri and Warrior that provided natural beauty to the municipality. He also recalled that roads built by the governor have also collapsed, adding that apart from the collapsed physical infrastructure, the Imo state economy for the first time collapsed under Governor Okorosha. The government under Okorosha has also collapsed the middle class, as more scale businesses in the state with the attendant widespread hunger and debt, with most of the business in the state picking at 84 as against 11 in 2011, or Hakim said. Emo people don't give those who govern them Britain space to bring out the best, Okorosha said. The Emo state government has said the elite who criticize the governor of Emo state, Chief Rosha Okorosha, have not committed any crime and that Emo people are very active as they do not give those who govern them Britain space to bring out the best in them. Okorosha made this in a statement on Wednesday, 13th of June 2018, while lampooning former governor of the state, Chief Ike the Godson, or Hakim. Kuroja said, since the former governor of the state, Chief Ike, the Gautzino Hakim, announced his intention to contest the governorship election again in the state, he has developed the sickening impression that the only way he can achieve that tall dream is by attacking Governor Rocha Sokorosha in the media repeatedly, and he has been doing it to the best of his ability. But we decided not to be responding to all his attacks, and we have been living up to that decision. We also have our reasons for taking such stand. Of all those who have governed the state since its creation in 1976, both military and civilian, his administration appears to be the most hated and the most devalued. He does not also have any audience. Nobody listens to him again, and people do not read what he says. It is as bad as that. He doesn't even talk like someone who had governed the state before. He does not also watch the conduct of Chief Achike Udengwa, also a former governor. A former governor should know when to talk and when to keep moods. Criticizing everything done by the occupant of the seat you have occupied before smacks of frustration and envy. When the government began remodeling of the Children's Park Bridge to connect it with Heroes Square to avoid a traffic jam along the Concord Hotel Road whenever there is a big function at a place, Chief Hakim picked an unfounded information from the social media and said the bridge collapsed, which was not true. When the heavy rain 
On Friday, June 8, 2019, came with a devastating whirlwind that destroyed both private and public properties in Oweri, including the roof of the building in one of the government built city school. Chivohake made it an issue when there were no more serious reports from other states. The rain also caused havoc. Other people can descend so low to be talking about such minor issues, but not a former governor of the state who should know better. Chief Hakim had governed the state and let him take up Governor Okorosha on issues of governance or achievements. Okorosha said he has more than 1,000 verifiable projects located in various parts of the states. Let him take up such issues and not talking about roof destroyed by wind. For now, the noise in the state is all about who succeeds Russia's. The elite want to install someone. They are entitled to such ambition. Russia's is also keen in who succeeds him to continue keeping the flag of rapid development flying. At the end of the day, Imo people will take the final decision through the ballot box. It is not a propaganda thing. This was by Russia's reacting to Ikedi Hakim's comments. We reported earlier in this channel that the court gave GT Bank 14 days to pay in 14 billion naira to an interest yielding account, which we believe later will be transferred to Innocent. There are news making rounds that Innocent himself said the report was false. The report from his uh, PRO, Colonel Osiwe, that GTB Bank was asked to pay 14 billion naira to an interest yielding account. This counter report was circulated by Linda Ikeji. Here is Colonel Osigwe's reaction on this Linda Ikeji's counter report. Look at what Colonel Osigwe said in his reaction. He says, Please, whoever knows Linda Ikeji should tell her to pull down the story on her wall that suggests I said innocent admits lying about Supreme Court judgments. It was brought to my notice the sponsored distorted post on Twitter suggesting I recanted our earlier press statements. I decided to ignore them and not give them my costly attention. Some credible news media who came across the story contacted me and I referred them to my Facebook wall, which has become over time my official platform for press releases. For the record, we stand by our press statement that GT Bank shall within 14 days pay 14 billion naira to the Court of Appeal, which shall be paid into an interest yielding account. GT Bank should be advised it remains nine days, that's nine days as at the time of this report, for them to obey the ruling of the Court of Appeal. Whoever knows Linda Ikeji should direct her to this post and tell her to pull down the fake news on her website. And this was a press release by Cornelo Sigwe. He was reacting to the news circulating that Innocent Recant says courts never awarded him 14 billion naira against GTB. Thanks for listening to Igbo Area TV. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more updates. You can also visit our Facebook page and like our page. You can join our Facebook group, Igbo Area TV. God bless you and bye for now.